the Bible to the cross from the cross. Every Bible story has three components. First, God's law. Second, God's compassion. Third, God's miracle. Opening your Bible opens miracles. The Bible as one story is holy enough in our lives. Day 119, Proverbs 10 to 15. Working with a wise person. Through clear distinction and contrast between a righteous person and an evil person, Proverbs urged readers to choose the righteous and wise path. First point. Remembering to cultivate crops is vital in order to offer to God. If one does not cultivate during harvest, all their hard work is bound to go to waste. All things have a start and a finish. People were able to take their grains to the temple to make an offering to God. The people were to take their first fruits during the festival of the harvest. And during the festival of the tabernacle, they thanked the God for their good harvest. This was the laws of a kingdom of priests. It was important that the people offered to God and also shared with their neighbors. As such, the Israelites had to cultivate crops at the right time and to make offerings in due course in order to share joy with their neighbors. Second point, love overcomes all. Solomon claimed that love overcomes all flaws. Solomon wrote, Hatred stirs up conflict, but love covers over all wrongs. Love and hatred all start from the heart, and these emotions are revealed through words. The mouth of the righteous is a fountain of life, but the mouth of the wicked conceals violence. Sin is not ended up by multiplying words, but the prudent hold their tongues. Solomon repeatedly taught on the importance of words. Solomon's advice is for people to be selective on what they say. Third point, a sinner causes himself trouble with his own tongue. Solomon claimed that the difference between a righteous and a foolish person was in what they said. A righteous person's words could save a life, but a foolish person's words could do the opposite. The words said out loud reveals what is in the heart. A righteous person would say beautiful words, whereas a foolish person would say harmful words. This would make their neighbors joyful or hurtful. It is so important what we say to one another. This can be seen most vividly in what the two lovers said to Jesus whilst being crucified. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you are under the same sentence? We are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Fourth point, a humble person is open to wisdom. God is the creator and humans are God's creation. Therefore, humans must accept limitations and be humble. Obeying God and being humble is the core of wisdom. We as creations must be humble in front of our Creator God. In the Bible, we can see how Moses accepted the advice from his father-in-law, Jezro. He chose capable men from all Israel and made them leaders of the people. 
officials over thousands, hundreds, fifties, and tens. They served as judges for the people at all times. The difficult cases they brought to Moses, but the simple ones they decided themselves. Oppositely, the foolish king of South Judah, Zedekiah, did not listen to the words of Jeremiah, and so ended up having the worst outcome. When Jeremiah advised him to quickly surrender to Babylon, he said to Jeremiah, I am afraid of the Jews who have gone over to the Babylonians, for the Babylonians may hand me over to them, and they will mistreat me. So Jeremiah said, Obey the Lord by doing what I tell you. Then it will go well with you, and your life will be spared. Zedekiah, who did not listen to Jeremiah until the very end, ended up seeing his sons being killed in front of him by the Babylonians. Fifth point, working alongside a wise person is the way to gain wisdom. Solomon said that it was important to befriend wise people in order to become wise. The Bible records a few of such cases. The first is Joshua and Caleb. Then Joshua blessed Caleb, son of Jephneh, and gave him Hebron as his inheritance. So Hebron has belonged to Caleb, son of Jephneh, the Kenesite, ever since. Because he followed the Lord, the God of Israel, wholeheartedly. The second is David and Jonathan. After David had finished talking with Saul, Jonathan became one in spirit with David, and he loved him as himself. The third is David and Hushai. So Hushai, David's confidant, arrived at Jerusalem, and Absalom was entering the city. The fourth is Esther and Mordecai. So Queen Esther, daughter of Abihail, along with Mordecai the Jew, wrote with full authority to confirm this second letter concerning Purim. The fifth is Daniel and his three friends. Then Daniel returned to his house and explained the matter to his friends. Hananiah, Mishael and Azariah. He urged them to plead for mercy for the God of heaven concerning this mystery so that he and his friends might not be executed with the last of the wise men of Babylon. The sixth is Paul and Barnabas. When he came to Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him, not believing that he really was a disciple. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles. He told them how Saul on his journey had seen the Lord and that the Lord had spoken to him, and how in Damascus he had preached fearlessly in the name of Jesus. The seventh is Paul and Onesimus and also Philemon. Yet I prefer to appeal to you on the basis of love. It is as none other than Paul, an older man and now also a prisoner of Christ Jesus, that I appeal to you for my son Onesimus, who became my son while I was in chains. Formerly he was useless to you, but now he has become useful both to you and to me. I am sending him who is my very heart, back to you. The Bible also records bad friendships. The first is Ammon and Joab. The second is Rehoboam and his friends. Our greatest friend is Jesus Christ. This Tong Doc app is amazing. When I first met Dr. Zhou, we were speaking together at a conference. And when I saw the Tong Bible and the way he had placed this one story together, the Bible, one story, I ordered cases of this Bible. Now to see this app, the Tong Doc app, 
ready for you to use in your daily Bibles reading. This is amazing because so many people tell me I don't understand the Bible. And he has placed it in an order as so that it is one story. And then day after day, takes you through the Bible in a way that God's Word will touch your heart so deeply that it changes your beliefs. It helps you to rise up and be the amazing person He created you to be. Welcome to the Tong Dog app.